Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over one long worked example to show you how to do problems involving resistance. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous theory videos covering resistance, resistors in series and parallel, and combining resistors, as watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. So in our one long question, it says that in each case, determine the resistance between X and Y. So there's several parts to this question which we'll work through. Part A shows four resistors of 1 ohm, 3 ohm, 5 ohms, and 6 ohms. So we're thinking about resistors in series here. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the total resistance between X and Y. We know that R1 is 1 ohm, R2 is 3 ohms, R3 is 5 ohms, and R4 is 6 ohms. So all we need to do is write down the simple relationship for resistors in series. So we get RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, stopping at R4 because there's four resistors, and then substituting in the numbers gives us 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6, and putting that into your calculator gives you a final answer of 15 ohms. Part B shows a parallel combination of three resistors between X and Y, where we have an 8 ohm resistor, an 8 ohm resistor, and a 4 ohm resistor. So we should be thinking about resistors in parallel for this one. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the total resistance. We know that R1 is 8 ohms, R2 is 8 ohms, and R3 is 4 ohms. So writing down our relationship for resistors in parallel, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. And remember, there's several things you can do at this point. You can either use the lowest common denominator method or the brackets method or the x to the minus 1 method on your calculator. So it's totally up to you which one you want to use. But let's say we use the lowest common denominator without a calculator. Then if I want this denominator here to be the same as these two, then I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. So I get 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 2 over 8. And now I can simplify this to one fraction. So this gives me 4 over 8, and then remember this is only 1 over RT, so in order to get RT, I need to flip both sides. So I get RT equals 8 over 4, and that gives us a final answer of 2 ohms. Part C shows a combination circuit between points X and Y, where we have two resistors in series here, one resistor on its own in the middle, and then another two resistors in series, and all three of these branches are in parallel with each other. So what we need to do here is find the series combination for the upper and lower branches, and then the parallel combination. So doing the series combination first, we only need to do it once because both the upper and the lower branch are actually identical. So we're trying to find RT, we know that R1 is 10 ohms and R2 is 10 ohms, so writing down our equation, we have RT equals R1 plus R2, and substituting in the numbers gives us 10 plus 10, which gives us 20 ohms. And we note here that the upper and lower branches are the same, so we don't need to do this again for the lower one. We know that that is going to be 20 ohms as well. So now we can do the parallel combination. So we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 20 ohms, R2 is 10 ohms, and R3 is 20 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. Using the lowest common denominator method again, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 2 in order to get this to 20. So that gives me 1 over 20 plus 2 over 20 plus 1 over 20. And then I can simplify it into one fraction. So I get 4 over 20. And then remember, I need to flip both sides here. So I get RT equals 20 over 4, which is the same as 5 ohms. Part D shows something a bit more complicated looking, but you can see we've got X and Y points here, and then we've got a 3 ohm resistor in series with a 6 ohm resistor, and then that is actually in parallel with this other resistor here, this 6 ohm resistor. So what we need to do in this question is find the series combination first, and then the parallel combination. So for the series one, writing down what we know, we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 3 ohms and R2 is 6 ohms. It doesn't matter which one you call R1 and which one you call R2. Writing down our equation, we get RT equals R1 plus R2. Substituting in the numbers gives 3 plus 6, which gives us 9 ohms. And then we can do the parallel combination. So we have RT is what we're trying to find. R1 is 6 ohms and R2 is 9 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Substituting in the numbers gives... 1 over 6 plus 1 over 9, and the lowest common denominator here is going to be 18. So 6 goes into 18 3 times, and 9 goes into 18 twice. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the first fraction by 3, and I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the second fraction by 2. So I get 3 over 18 plus 2 over 18, which gives me 5 over 18, simplifying it into one fraction. And then I can flip both sides to get RT equals 18 over 5, and if you put that into your calculator, you should get a final answer of 3.6 ohms. 
Lastly, part E shows another complicated looking circuit, but we're just going to break it down into the parts. So we're trying to find the total resistance between X and Y. We have two 30 ohm resistors in series here. Don't be fooled by the corner here, they are actually still in series. And then we have a 60 ohm resistor in parallel with that. And then we have another series combination of two 30 ohm resistors in parallel with this 60 ohm resistor. So what we need to do here is first find the series combination for the upper and lower branches and then the parallel combination. So considering the series combination for the first branch first of all, we have RT is what we're trying to find, R1 is 30 ohms and R2 is 30 ohms. So RT is equal to R1 plus R2, substituting in the numbers we get 30 plus 30 which gives us 60 ohms. And again, note that the upper and lower branches are the same in this case, so we don't need to do this again for the lower branch. But that means we can resolve this into three parallel resistors, and we have RT is what we're trying to find. R1 is 60 ohms, R2 is 60 ohms, and R3 is 60 ohms. So we have three 60 ohm resistors in parallel. Writing down our equation, we get 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers gives 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60, which simplifies to 3 over 60, and then we can flip both sides to get RT equals 60 over 3, and that then gives a final answer of 20 ohms. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.